look, the, our health system is obviously one of the best in the world, and we have had a, a, the luxury of a bit of time, you might say, but we've been able to prepare immensely well, I believe, for the, any impending wave of COVID-19, which does, which now looks less likely than it did even three weeks ago. Uh, but it's a, it's really full credit to um, the, our CMO, Professor Murphy, and, and the minister, and did um, the. The whole national cabinet, you might say, there's, have all come together to put Australia on the best footing in preparation for uh, whatever what might eventuate uh, over the coming months. But clearly, we're at a stage now where I think uh, we're the envy of most of the world, and uh, not too many countries would um, would be in better positions, if any, indeed. And when does that mean that progress? Does it mean that elective surgeries can begin again tomorrow? So th this is the this is an excellent point, Laura. Uh, 26th of March, the decision was made to restrict uh, put the restrictions on uh, elective surgery. Be why? Because we wanted to conserve valuable PPE. We wanted to minimise the risk of uh, transmission of the of uh, COVID-19, both to patient and, and to to uh, medical professionals, and also to ensure that we had capacity in our hospitals for any wave of COVID-19 infections. Now, the community has done its bit, uh, it's done remarkably well in trying to uh, reduce the, uh, the spread of the disease. We've prepared and now we're in, a, in the, that luxury state of being able to talk about lifting the restrictions and lifting them in you know, a sensible and safe way which balances the patient need and the, uh, the, com the conditions that are being having to be met as well as the available uh, increased numbers of, uh, of masks and, and other personal protective equipment and indeed the enormous capacity that we've got available uh, in our hospitals because the, the expected tide of COVID-19 cases didn't eventuate. And that's a fortunate and a part of the success of our whole strategy. So we can talk about lifting those restrictions, especially for the really low risk procedures, uh, especially for those procedures which have a high clinical need, a high clinical value for patients, because every day that they've put off their surgery is another day of pain or loss of function continuing on in their life, having to manage that reduced quality of life, but also potential for complications and, ca and the less urgent becoming more urgent over time. We've got one of the best healthcare systems in the world, which gives us the best health outcomes, you might say, but if we're putting those health outcomes into the future, a burden of disease, a burden of complications down the track, which will be more difficult to manage over time. So if we've got the capacity, We've got those procedures in place. We've got the protections um, to have that gradual lifting of the, the, the less risky and the more clinical uh, the clinical need or value pay, uh, procedures for our patients. We should be able to start that doing that now. So when, in your view, does that start? After National Cabinet, of course, when the formal decision is made. But in your view, can some of those elective surgeries start as early as tomorrow? And what kind of procedures would you have in mind? So in terms of when they could start, that's obviously um, a case by case, state by state. Some states would be in better st uh, preparedness than others to have that. Clearly, uh, you know, in terms of their, their available capacity and the demand for those, uh, those beds. But it's a case by, you know, what we're saying is that there should be a clinical governance structure at each, uh, at each level of uh, jurisdiction that looks at which, what is the waiting list? What are the procedures that could start? And some of those procedures, the you know the the really the ones that don't require much in the way of uh, don't expose much in the way of any potential risk of transmission, a low a low uh, a low risky procedures and, and require less in the way of uh, personal protective. So what are we equipment. talking about here? Are we talking about dental procedures? Are we talking about IVF? Are we talking about hip well, and well, knee clearly, replacement? Clearly. Clearly, the um, the minister and the and um, and the the cabinet are looking particularly at IVF procedures as being one of the first ones. But some of those are other uh, joint replacements that could obviously occur. Um, some of the other conditions that, but it really comes down to the clinician looking at the patient, looking at their condition, and looking at what that is their need or their 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 situation in terms of uh, that operative. Uh, repair or operative intervention and it's a it's case by case it's not to decide that 
today we can start doing X's or Y. It's looking at the whole gamut of things and what can be done safely, securely, with the confidence that we are protecting patients and staff. We are, we are giving the patient the best opportunity to improve their health outcomes and also uh, still keeping an, an available eye on bed numbers. And if we did need to ramp up again because of a change in our, the community conditions, we can certainly start to look at uh, uh, clawing back some of those restrictions if we need to very quickly.